Good morning, children. I hope you had a fantastic week. Welcome to Sunday School Online with me, Teacher Sakina. So today we're going to be learning about decisions. But before we get started, we have a checklist. I hope that you have your Bible, a notebook, and a pen or a pencil so that you can note down the memory verse or new words that you pick up from the lesson, okay? So while you're getting all these things together, I usually ask three questions. One, are you washing your hands? Are you reading your books? Are you helping your parents? I hope you're doing all of the above. So now that you've got all your stuff together, we're going to begin with a word of prayer, all right? So hands together, eyes closed, Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the gift of life and for the gift of health. Thank you for a warm bed to sleep in, food in our kitchen, and clothes on our backs. We know that not all children have these things, and so we pray that you shall be their provider, their protector, and their healer. And today, as we learn about decisions, we pray that our hearts may be open to hear from you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, kids, so next up is a song. And this song is taken actually from our memory verse, so you'll be able to remember it much better through this song, okay? So let's sing, it goes like this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And never, never lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him. And He shall direct your path. Wonderful. So that song is going to come from today's memory verse. So stick around till the end so that you know what book of the Bible that song is from. Okay? Awesome. So what is a decision? You know when you have to decide between who's your favorite superhero, Superman or Batman? Do you like um, crisps or do you like popcorn? Do you prefer the color orange or do you like blue? Do you like to sit indoors and read or do you like to go outside and play with your friends? You see those things that you're deciding what you like more than the other? That's what a decision is. So in the dictionary, it says a decision is a choice that you make about something after thinking about several possibilities. So for example, um, maybe some of you like Superman because he can actually fly and Batman has to have gadgets to be able to fly. Oops. And um, yeah, you like Superman maybe because he has a cooler costume than Batman or you like crisp because they come in different flavors and popcorn, maybe it's just salted and the caramel, what, you know, you all have different choices based on your thinking about, hmm, why do I like this thing more than this thing? So that's what decisions are. So there are hard decisions, very, very hard decisions, like the one somebody called Esther had to make. Do you know that there's a book in the Bible called Esther? Well, if you don't know, it's in the Old Testament. Look it up, read about it. It's not very long. You can, you know, you can even finish it this week. So if you don't know who Esther was or who I'm talking about, here are a few quick facts about her. She was an orphan and she was under the care of her cousin called Mordecai. So Mordecai used to work in the palace. And at the time that he was working there, King Xerxes, his name is, has two X's. I hear people say Xerxes. I don't know if that's how it's said, but hey. So King Xerxes had a queen and she was called Vashti. Now he was having a party, right? A huge party. And you know, he was feeling excited and maybe was under the influence of something that I hope children you can stay away from. 
don't drink alcohol. It's not okay. So anyway, this is what happened to King Xerxes. He got excited, he was drunk, and his friends were like, hey, 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 um, you know, this, this party is exciting, it's awesome, it's lit. And the king is like, you know what, I'm going to call the queen over here so that you guys can see how hot she is. And the queen was like, what? The king wanted to do what? To, to parade me in front of everybody? She said no. And the king was so annoyed. And you know what happened to Queen Bashti? She was kicked out of the kingdom. And then after that, the king was like, mm, I need a queen. So what happened is, I kind of had a, a beauty, con I'll call it a beauty contest, but it was, you know, more than that. You had to be beautiful, but you know, you also had to know how to have good conversation, things like that, so that you could make it to be queen. So that was the thing. This was a, con a contest to look for virgins all over the land and then they'd be brought into the kingdom and then they'd go like through like, you know, a glam time. They get their hair done, they smell nice, they eat really good food and then, you know, after a time they go and see the king. So after a while, the king really liked Esther and she ended up being queen. Yes, from an orphan to a queen. Woohoo! But then there was somebody called Haman. Haman is the bad guy in this story. Haman didn't like Jews. So he'd started putting together a plot to make sure that all the Jews were killed. And he didn't know that Queen Esther was a Jew. So when Mordecai heard about what Haman, do, was, what Haman was planning to do, he went to Queen Esther. So... He went and told Esther, yo, there's a guy called Haman in your kingdom who's planning to kill all the Jews. You're the queen. You have to do something about it. And she was like, well, Mordecai, can you imagine? Like after she's gone through all that, she's just, you know, in her chambers, probably listening to relaxing music, eating all the food she wants. And then Mordecai comes to her with this huge job. She hasn't even enjoyed herself as queen. So Mordecai is like, look, there's this guy called Haman. He wants to kill all the Jews and you have to do something about it. But you see, there was just like one little itsy bitsy problem. You don't go to the king if he doesn't call you, because if you do, you're going to be killed. It didn't matter even if it was the queen. That was the rule. So Esther at first was, you know, kind of afraid. She was like, ah. I don't know, Mordecai. I don't know if I want to do this. So this is where the lesson comes in. Esther had a choice. She could have just been like, Mordecai, I'm having a really good time being queen right now and I don't want to get stressed out. We'll just figure this out like some other time. She could have said that. She could have said, hey, I'm the queen. I'm protected, but I don't know what to do, Mordecai. But then Here's what she did, and here's what we can learn from her story. Every choice brings a consequence, whether it is good or bad. What is a consequence? It sounds like a big word, but it's literally just like, for example, if you choose to play outside in the rain, the consequence is you're going to get sick, you're going to have a cold, and then maybe you won't be able to play for, say, the next whole week. If you choose to stay inside, even though your friends are outside playing in the rain, the good thing is you won't be sick and you'll be able to play when it's sunny outside. So those are what consequences are. It's like the after effect of making your decision. So at first hesitant, at first Esther was hesitant to go to the king, but then Mordecai said this to her. You can open Esther chapter four verse 14. And he says this, which is like very scary, I think, to me. He says, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. And guess what, guys? If you read the story to the end, aren't we glad that she chose to do the right thing? Because now she has a whole book dedicated to her and like the Jews didn't die at that time. So every choice brings a consequence whether it is good or bad number two we can pray to god for wisdom to make wise choice choices because god knows what the best choices are since he can see the future 
So after Mordecai tells her there's somebody planning to kill you guys, and then he tells her, look, if you don't do it, somebody else will, and eventually you'll die. So maybe this is why you're in the kingdom. Then she's like, you know what? Okay. So she asks Mordecai to go and tell everybody in the kingdom, every Jew in the kingdom to fast and pray with her for three days. Don't take any food, don't take any water. So you're not just, you know, there are certain fasts where it's like from morning to evening. These guys were not supposed to eat or drink for three days straight. Like even when it's nighttime, keep doing it. And she said, me and my maids will do the same. Now, I always wondered, were her maids Jewish? I don't know. It doesn't sound like it. But they were like, hey, you know, you work for the queen. So whatever she says you're going to do. So she fasted with the other Jews for three days straight. And they prayed. And at the end of that, she then had the strength to go because she was like, you know what? Whatever happens, God is with me. So have you ever had a very hard decision to make? Have you thought about praying about it? And if you're watching this and you're old enough, have you thought about fasting about it? Fasting is not, you know, a hunger strike. If you deny yourself food and water without praying, that's a hunger strike. But if you deny yourself food so that you can seek God and hear him clearly, now that's effective. So anytime that you have a really hard decision, can you pray about it? I promise you it will make a huge difference so that's what esther did the next lesson that we can learn is god gives people the freedom to make their own choices in life you know this story could have gone anyway even if mordecai had told her that very scary thing esther could have decided otherwise god always gives you choices and he's never going to force you to pick what he feels is best for you because he wants you to learn how to trust his will over your own, all right? And anytime that you're making a decision, think about these things. Would God be happy with this decision? Think about if Jesus were here because, you know, we had the, well, people in the Bible, in the New Testament had the advantage of meeting Jesus so you know he was like us he was a man what would jesus do in this situation if people were talking badly about somebody gossiping would jesus be gossiping with them if you had the option to take something that wasn't yours would jesus take it and then finally because you're still children who are living under your parents roof would your mom or dad be happy with you if you made a certain decision would they be happy to hear that you're the mean kid in class who's picking on other kids and making them sad? Would your mom or dad be happy if they saw you being not a good brother or sister? If you start to think of your decisions that way, it might look like it takes a lot more time, but you'll avoid many more mistakes because you're thinking before you act, right? So. Kids, what are the three lessons that we are picking up from the story of Esther? Every choice brings a consequence. Number two, you can pray to God for wisdom. And number three, God gives us the freedom to choose. All right. So. In closing. If you have not been here before, we usually close with a song that goes like this. Thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed, my soul is at rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. All right, kids, remember I love you, but God loves you more. Have an amazing week and see you next Sunday. Bye.